When I was first diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, I was told a number of things that just plain aren't true. Uh, my doctor didn't know he was lying to me, but these were blatantly incorrect. First is that I would die early, guaranteed. Second is that I would have complications within 10 years. And third was that carbs were no longer an option. No sugar of any kind ever again. Uh, there's a number of other things that I was told as well that were just filled with misinformation. But today I want to talk to you about the second chance that I was given with type 1 diabetes. My life that got turned around and uh, I was given a fresh start or a reset and how at any point we can discover this reset with just one simple twist. So I want to get to that towards the end. But in this episode, there's going to be some vulnerable moments. There's going to be some exciting turns and twists in the story. But I want you to understand that this is also a representation of your journey with type 1 diabetes or any kind of diabetes or difficulty in life as well. So uh, we're going to get into our theme song and then I've got a really interesting story for you to break down the lesson. Let's get into it. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. So what's funny about this uh, this episode is that you can't tell that anything is different, but everything surrounding me is blank. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in here. Uh, the background looks the exact same, but that's because that's the last part to go. I'm moving. Uh, I'm actually not moving physical locations or the same address, but I'm actually moving rooms. We had a, a new build for the office studio and it's going to be built out for YouTube and a lot of recording stuff and it's a ton of fun. Really looking forward to it. And I've actually always enjoyed this process of moving, of fresh starts and new beginnings. Uh, I mean, in my life, I've probably moved close to 20 times. In fact, in a three year period when I was living in New York, I moved seven times just in New York. <laughs> it was wild. California, I've probably lived in seven different places, if not more, and maybe 10. I've lived in Europe. Anyways, that's a different story. But each time that I moved, I was thrilled. I love the idea of getting to a new spot and deciding where things go and what decorations are going to hang where and what's the shape of this room and how am I going to fit the couch in here because I don't want to buy a new couch, you know, and it's just this really fun process for me. And I realized that with diabetes, it can feel like that process is done once and then it's over or any new diagnosis or difficulty in life, right? Uh, I, I realized that when I get into a new room, I don't typically move things around or try and reset unless there is a catalyst, like a new room being built that I'm moving into, right? And this new room's got all these new dimensions, it's different carpet, it's different lighting that I get to kind of experiment with for these recordings. And uh, if I didn't have that catalyst, if I didn't have a reason to move things around, nothing would change, right? If I'm in the same room, I don't typically just wake up one day and decide I'm going to remove all of the furniture and try to redecorate in a completely different arrangement and see if I can make it work and, you know, take all the pictures off the walls and put them somewhere else. It's just not typically part of our routine, right? You wait until there is a reason to do something. And so today is part of the lesson. I want to give you a reason or an excuse to hit the reset button on your diagnosis, on a difficulty in life, on something you're going through that you might have only felt you had one go at. So when I was first diagnosed, I was given a myriad of ridiculous starting points of information that were all false or mostly all false. Now, from that starting point, I was told what to believe about my diabetes. I was told it's nearly impossible to control, uh, to just expect difficulties, and then I have to be restricted in my diet, my exercise, my adventure, just to expect a subpar quality of life. And it took me years to realize that I can question that. And then from realizing that I can question that to actually questioning that. See, it wasn't for uh, many years, eight, 10 years, something like that, until I had a near-death experience in a foreign country all by myself, where I almost died from a low blood sugar, severe low, terrifying experience. And it was in that moment that I realized 
I need to make a change before that ridiculous doctor's words to me become true and I actually do die early, right? And coming back from that, I had the catalyst moment. After about six months of living in restriction, of being terrified of insulin, wanting to do everything in my power to avoid lows, I finally had that aha moment where I realized diabetes is a build your own adventure. <laughs> it doesn't have to be this restrictive, live inside of a box, restricted quality of life kind of thing. And that for me was the excuse or the reason that I needed to make some changes. And the changes that I made were big. It's like moving, right? Where you get a whole new room, you have to figure out which pieces of furniture fit where, if you have to buy new furniture or get rid of old furniture, uh, you know, does your favorite guitar get to come with you or does that go into storage? <laughs> All these new decisions come into play when there is that catalyst, that moment of change. And so in that moment for me, with my diabetes, you know, realizing my mental health was trash, uh, my quality of life was trash, and I just, I knew something needed to change, otherwise I didn't really see much of a point in life itself, and uh, as to put it lightly, I realized that I got to experiment with my blood sugars to see what they might do if I did try and break some of the rules or bend some of the rules. And in that process, of course, I experimented with just about everything. Uh, the different diets, the different workout types, sleeping schedules, insulin types, uh, you know, taking shots versus an insulin pump, wearing a CGM, like all this crazy stuff that I had never considered before. And then I started to think to myself, well, what do I want diabetes to look like? What's possible, right? And I didn't have any role models really showing me what that looked like. And so I, I had a chance to reinvent my own diabetes and it kind of felt like a second diagnosis, a new opportunity to decide, do I want to wear a CGM? Do I want to wear an insulin pump or do I prefer shots? And I actually went back and forth and people don't know that about me, but uh, it took me eight years to even consider getting an insulin pump. And after being on it for a couple of years, I went back off. <laughs> I was like, you know, what? let's try MDI again or shots. And then after, I think it was like a month or so on MDI, went back to the insulin pump and was like, okay. I like it. I feel good about this. But you have a choice in the matter. Just like when you're moving, you have a choice where the furniture goes, which things get kept, which goes to the junkyard versus into storage. You get to reinvent that new space and decide for yourself what it looks like. And that's the exciting part, is that at any moment in our lives, we are one decision away from a completely different life. At any moment, you can say, I choose to be a different person today. And that could just be your catalyst. You don't actually have to have a big change happen to you. You can be the change. And for me, that was a huge takeaway, realizing that if I wanted to, if I so desired, I could decide tomorrow that now I'm a sports enthusiast and I'm going to research everything about professional sports, I'm going to uh, get into motocross, you know, whatever it is, I can decide that's what I'm gonna be all about from now on. I can decide tomorrow that I'm gonna be a chef. I can decide tomorrow that I'm gonna be uh, a dog lover that takes in stray dogs and turns my backyard into a sanctuary. <laughs> you get to choose what your life becomes. And similarly, with diabetes, We've all been fed information, good or bad, on what we should believe to be the truth about our diabetes experience, right? And it's up to us to determine what we want to believe is true and what we want to make true. So I was told, can't have carbs, sugar's never gonna be okay for you. I eat hundreds, like there's an S on the end, multiple hundreds of grams of carbs per day now. And I maintain, I'll put it here, 95% time and range like all the time, well, all the time it's above 90, it kind of fluctuates a little bit, but I'm totally controlled and I eat tons of carbs. Uh, actually, right before this episode, I had a dark chocolate peanut butter cup from Trader Joe's. <laughs> it was delicious, I love them. And so I got to decide that I want carbs and you might be different, maybe you hate carbs, but you love fats and proteins, right? You're a carnivore kind of a person, cool, do that. Do what makes you happy, but do it intentionally. And so what I want to invite you to play around with today is discovering what you want 
uh, in life with diabetes and building it intentionally. Uh, I'll give you a couple ideas, right? So. Uh, obviously, I run a business aside from these episodes and, and educating for free on YouTube and podcasts and all of that. And in my business, we teach a very specific type of diabetes management that for me unlocked freedom with blood sugars where they can be controlled, but I also have a high quality of life, right? I train for triathlons. I'm a dad and a husband. I uh, run my own business. I eat fancy foods that are delicious. I don't hold back anymore. That's the key anymore. <laughs> I used to be very restricted uh, in food, in schedule, in routines, and habits, and activities, all of it. It was depressing, honestly. Uh, but I want you to see that there are other options out there. You might not be into blood sugar formulas, which is what I teach, right? I teach the 80-20 blood sugar formula. It's how we predict stable blood sugars. And if you're into, you know, certainty, and confidence with blood sugars while being able to have more of a flexible lifestyle, having that freedom. There's a, a link for you in the description of this. You can click on that. It's a free training that kind of shows you how formulas function and where it fits into the blood sugar management plan, right? And you might be able to find some value in that. Uh, but if not, you know, I recognize it's not for everybody. So I want you to know what else is out there. A couple of common macronutrient profiles. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, Watch my training first, and then you'll understand a bit more about it. But some common macronutrient profiles that are recommended these days, one is low carb, right? It's pretty common. That's what I was told to do, essentially, low carb or keto. Um, there's a, a popular book that uh, goes a bit deeper into that process, and uh, they, they follow something called the, the law of small numbers. Essentially, the less carbs you eat, the less insulin you have to take, the less fluctuations you'll see, which in theory is true, but there's a lot more to it. That guy's called Bernstein. There's a lot of people that follow me that like him. Great. Find what you want that's going to work for you. Okay, I'm not going to force you to stop following what works for you. Uh, so check that out. If you hate carbs and you like the idea of the law of small numbers, that's a good resource. Uh, another one, if you love carbs, some other guys called Mastering Diabetes, friends of mine actually and they follow a vegan lifestyle. I actually tried their stuff out. Uh, I've tried uh, all the, the main diets out at one point or another, but they've got great resources for people who want to reverse insulin resistance and focus more on carbs. So they actually eat more carbs than I do, which is wild. Uh, but that's another resource that you can check out, right? And these are different macronutrient profiles that were, if you want to follow that type of lifestyle, those are the guys to do it, right? I don't do vegan anymore. I did for a little while, uh, but it's just not my thing. And I found what works best for me, which is the flexibility to shift between macronutrient profiles. So I can be low carb on Monday, I could be vegan on Tuesday, and I could be carnivore on Wednesday. Most days I just kind of eat whatever though. I don't follow one specific way of eating anymore. But that's the freedom that you have. The second diagnosis, be the catalyst in your life. Make that decision that you get to make and no one else gets to make for you on what you want your diabetes to look like. It can be precision controlled, predictable, and allow for freedom and flexibility. It can be also be absolute chaos. If you don't follow any of the rules, you guess on your insulin to carb ratios, you, you don't even know what your blood sugars are. I've done that too. It's chaotic. It's a little bit terrifying and it's very frustrating. <laughs> so you get to pick your own path. It's essentially, a choose your own adventure story. And that's what I wanted to convey today is that the second diagnosis for me was an actual event in my life where I, I was shown that diabetes didn't have to be just one way. And uh, it was a very difficult experience to go through to have that moment in my life, but it allowed me this opportunity to create intentionally this big blueprint for what I want diabetes to look like. And I want you to understand, you can do that too. And you can actually do it today. Today can be the day you decide life now looks different because I want it to. I, I wanna try new things. I wanna have fun. I want to enjoy food again. I want to live a long, healthy life and minimize my risk for complications without diabetes getting in the way or becoming obsessive in my head or the list goes on, right? So that decision is yours today. And looking back, I realized that it was that moment for me that allowed me to start questioning the things that I was taught to believe by my medical team that just aren't true anymore. You know, maybe once upon a time, 
complications were guaranteed. Your lifespan was shortened. You couldn't eat carbs, right? The starvation diet was actually the first treatment for type 1 diabetes. But so many of these things that we've been taught by our medical teams just aren't true anymore. So it's important that you question what you've been taught, test its validity, and decide what your life should look like for you. So a thought experiment for you. If you were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes again today, for the second time, what would you change? What would look different? Uh, what preferences would you shift towards? Right? Would you change your macronutrient profile? Would you go from low carb to high carb, high carb to low carb? Uh, follow more of a flexible plan like the one that we teach, right? where hundreds if not thousands of people have shifted to the blood sugar formula method of managing type 1 diabetes and followed my teachings there. Would you change CGM versus insulin pump versus MDI versus inhalable insulin? Would you try new things? Would you go for more activities, more traveling? Would you attempt to be an athlete? Would you uh, find a pathway to lose weight? What would you change? And my encouragement for you today is to make those changes. Let today be your catalyst. Let this episode be your catalyst to have a fresh start, to make the changes necessary to live your best life. Don't let diabetes hold you back. It's taken enough, right? It robs us of so much. And yes, it's given us opportunities, but at this point, the robbing of your quality of life needs to end because now you get to decide what life looks like. And in all fairness, I am using today as my catalyst as well. So to give you an example and to, to lead by example, I recognize that my diet needs to shift. I even mentioned this like a couple months ago in one of these episodes and I never made the shift, at least not completely. Uh, my diet needs to be cleaned up. I've been I'm leaning towards a lot more processed foods and for me it's in, in an attempt to do two things. One, the carbs are all counted for me so I don't have to weigh anything or get measuring cups out. It's just nice. But two, it's fast. Right? I run a business. I am a family man. I've got a triathlon that I'm training for. I don't have a lot of time and so I've always leaned towards the processed prepackaged goods. So for me, I recognize that I need to make some changes in my diet and moving forward, I will be. So instead of saying, I should, I could, I might, I am making changes. Let this episode serve as proof that I'll be making changes to my diet and I will be documenting them. I've actually got a video coming up on what my favorite superfoods are that I'm going to be including in my diet, more natural organic roots and, uh, and getting into more of that as well because we all can use improvement. There is no end where you stop improving or you cease needing to improve. There's always more to learn, always new things to gain experience from. And I recognize that as well. So I will be making adjustments to my diet and uh, putting those up on YouTube in the near future and uh, sharing what I learn on what foods that are easy to introduce into a diet that might be cheap or easy to cook or don't take time. I'll be sharing that with you guys as well. So what am I doing today? As today is the catalyst and as I'm encouraging you to use today as that moment, you make your decision to change your life trajectory for the better life that you want and deserve. My decision today was to start looking for private chefs, meal prep companies, meal delivery companies, trying to find some solution that will help me to overcome the biggest friction that I have in changing my diet, which is the prep. I hate making the food and taking all the time to clean up and do all this stuff. So I'm trying to find somebody who can do it for me to see if there is a viable option for me that will allow me to maintain the current schedule and chaos that I have in my life without having to give more energy to my diet. And you know, just like I'm looking into private chef, meal delivery, meal prep, uh, you know, other healthy options that are delivered and save me the time, there are experts in whatever it is that you're trying to overcome or improve upon available for you. Like literally any topic, career, uh, subject of mastery, difficulty you're experiencing, there is an expert in that field, I guarantee it. And you can go to them with questions, and I'm sure they'll be nice enough to like answer a few questions for you, but if you really want to dive deep, I guarantee you, they're for hire. Even if they're like, oh, I'm too busy, like, either get on their wait list or just 
you know, what's your price? Name your price. <laughs> and most people are like, all right, I'll help you out. But go find the expert that will help you to shortcut whatever the friction is that you're experiencing. For me, I hate the idea of prepping food. I'm gonna go find someone that I can pay to prep the food for me so I can just eat it and be happy, right? So find the expert to give you the shortcuts to the dream life that you know you deserve and let today be the catalyst that serves as that decision change, that point in your life when you say, that was the moment. That was the moment everything changed. I began to enjoy life with type one diabetes again. I got to see controlled blood sugars alongside happiness, quality of life, freedom, peace of mind, whatever it is that you're looking for. Maybe it's all of the above like it was for me. I hope this one helps for you. Uh, I wanted to share this little uh aha and uh, also encourage you to recognize that today is your second diagnosis day. How will life look different the second time around? Make those decisions wisely and intentionally and keep up the fight. I got a video for you on YouTube as well. You should check this one out next. And if you want more info on the formulas, check out the description. See you there.